Hello everyone.、Um, so today we will start our chapter seven, shear in beams. And as the first lecture, we will try to understand the nature of the shear stress in beams and、uh, calculate the shear stress in bended beams with simple section. Well, so far we have finished the two chapters regarding beams. In Chapter Five, we talked about、uh, the bending stress、uh, in beams, and in Chapter Six,、uh, we explained how to calculate the、um, deflection, the deformations uh, of uh, bended beams. So here are several questions. I hope you still remember those basic knowledge, as、uh, have a basic review based on these four questions. So first of all. How to find the centroid of a beam cross section? If the beam cross section is rectangle or circle, so it's easy to find the centroid, right? But how about if we have an I beam or a T shaped beam? I hope you still remember those equations. Okay, so how to find the centroid of a、um, beam cross section of a composite area? The equation is just a y bar equals sum a i y i over sum of a i, right? So here the a i is the sub area, and the y i is the location of the local centroid. And then how about how about the、um, Moment of inertia, the I. How to calculate the I? We have another equation. Right, this is、uh, the sum of、uh, I C I plus A I D I square. So here the I C I is the local、uh, moment of inertia of the sub area. Then the A I is the sub area, and D I D I measures. The distance from this local centroid to the overall centroid, right? So the di di actually equals the absolute value of y bar minus y i, right? So keep this in mind. We will use、uh, these equations later in our derivations. Then. Um, how can we calculate the bending stress? Like here, I mean the normal bending stress, the normal stress induced by the bending moment. Right, we have such equation. The normal stress equals m y over i. But here, the y is the distance from the neutral axis. Right, so the maximum. Bending stress equals the m by y max or c. Right, we use the c to denote the maximum value of y over i.、Right. So here, those are the、um, equations that we will use. We will need to use these equations. Please recall、um, these equations. Okay, so we will use them later in our derivations of the shear equation. Then, how to calculate、um, the deformations of uh, of uh, bended beams? The deformations we have two types of deformations at least, right? That we have、um, the deflection at a random point, and we have the slope right, at a random point. Then、um, we have integration methods. I will give a couple of examples. Though you have seen that the integration method is super complicated, and I have promised that I will not test it in exams. But you need to understand the superposition methods. Okay, we involve the two big tables. Where you can use, you can select the correct equations, correct situations, and correct equations from the big tables. Then combine them and using the superposition method to solve the deflection. And、uh, slope at a random point of a、uh, loaded beam. 
Then uh, in the last part, chapter six, uh, we also introduced how to use um, these big tables to solve indeterminate beams, or to find out the reaction forces of uh, indeterminate beams. Okay, those are uh, what we learned in the previous two chapters. Right, normal stress, bending stress, and uh, deformation. Is that all for beams? Then why do we need to study shear? Why still shear? So we already have equations to calculate stress. We already have equations and methods to calculate deformation. Why do we still need to study shear in beams? Okay, here is the case. You know, today this I uh, I, I I featured this music video uh, called "Lose You to Love Me." That song is not tied to shear, but uh, you know, in last year, that when that video was published, it was said that this MV was shot using iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, stimulated by this, I tried to use my my new iPhone to shoot a video of shear cracking in our lab, in our structural lab, but I failed. Okay, I failed. So. I couldn't show you any video took by uh, iPhone about the shear cracking. But uh, let's use an example to explain the nature of shear stress in beams. Okay, here is a, a beam. Let's see, a simply supported beam. This is a simply supported beam and subjected to a loading here, P. Okay. So let me ask you, if the P is big enough, is high enough, how where do you think the first cracks will appear? And uh, where the damage of this beam will be initiated? According to chapter five, if you analyze the bending stress, right, this, you will see that when this P is loaded, then the bottom of this beam will be subjected to tension, right? The top surface will be subjected to compression, right? So normal engineer engineering materials are weak in tension and strong in compression, like concrete, like other construction materials, right? So the failure, the damage of the material will be governed by tensile strength, tensile stress and tensile strength, right? So when the P is added, the uh, largest uh, tensile stress will be generated along the bottom, right? So the first cracks will likely to be initiated somewhere here. And then the propagation of these initial cracks will lead to damage of the material, of the beam. But well, that is a normal case. But right? if uh, the damage is governed by, uh, by bending stress, this is the case. However, in structural labs, you will see that sometimes the cracks leading to the, the final failure of the beam is not here. It's not such a crack. Okay. Sometimes the damage is governed by such type of cracks. These cracks, right? Though so these cracks uh, are called shear cracks. It's due to the combined effect of uh, normal stress and the shear stress. Okay. So later you will see that sometimes the shear stress can be very small, so you can ignore it. But sometimes it's not that small. It's re remarkably high, so you cannot ignore it. You have to uh, check the shear stress too. The meaning that in designing a structural member, you need to a uh, structural member of beam. So you need to check both bending stress, the normal stress, and the shear stress, and compare them with the tensile strengths and the shear strengths to make sure the design structural member is safe both in tension, in bending, and in in shear. So okay, this is why we need to analyze the shear 
stress in beams. So this is why we're learning chapter seven, shears in beams. In the first section, uh, 7.1, we will explain the nature of uh, shear stress in beams. So how could uh, the shear stress be generated in a bended beam? Okay, let's uh, start from an example, detailed example. I call it case one. Okay, in this example, we have a beam segment. A beam segment is shown here subjected to an internal bending moment at the sections the left hand side and the right hand side and the bending moment on the left uh, is 3,300 pound feet and the right hand side is 4,700 pound feet so the dimensions is shown here Analyze the stresses and the forces which one of the which, which one of the flanges is subjected to. Okay, so here in this beam we have two materials: the yellow colored and uh, the gray colored. Okay, the yellow colored are two flanges and they are attached to the central rib. Okay, this is the cross section of uh, of uh, the uh, this beam, this T-shaped beam. Okay, here, uh, as stated here, we have uh, a pair of bending moment on the left-hand side. It's the M left equals 3,300 pound feet. On the right-hand side, we have MR equals 4,700 pound pound feet. Is this reasonable? Anyone want to challenge this kind of situation? Anyone will say, well, this is impossible because if you put these two different bending moments to a beam section, it will not be in equilibrium. Anyone will say that? Okay, let's see a simply supported beam. Okay, here is a simply supported beam and it is subjected to a concentrated load P in the middle, upward bending. Okay, uh, the boundary condition said that uh, no deflection can take place on the two supports. So then this beam will be bended in this way, right? So the bending moment, the bending moment diagram. will be, okay, is the bending moment in this beam positive or negative? Okay, obviously, when you put a P upward, this beam will be crying, so it will be uh, negative bending moment, right? So the moment diagram will be like this, right? So, if you cut a section from here, okay, the corresponding bending values, bending moment values of this beam section will be here. So on the left hand side, you have a smaller negative bending moment. On the right hand side, you have a larger bending moment. Okay, so this is the case here, matching the case we're talking about. So you have a smaller bending moment on the left, you have a larger bending moment on the right. Okay. Well now the cross section has been shown here. Now we give a lot of uh, dimensions. So based on this, in the first step, we can um, calculate the section properties. So this include uh, the, the location of the centroid y bar and uh, the moment of inertia. Okay, Here I, I I assume all of you know. Do you remember these two big table, the two tables? 
and the equations we just reviewed and how to use them to calculate to find out the y bar and i. Okay. I just skip those steps and directly give you uh, the y bar equals 4.43 inch okay, from the top. Okay, so the um, that is uh, the y bar here as denoted here. Okay, y bar equals 4.43 inch. And then the i has been calculated as 346.5 inch to the fourth. So now, in the second step, we can uh, calculate the the bending stress in a in a flange. Since we're uh, requested to analyze the stresses and the forces which one of the flanges is subjected to. So now we're selecting this flange. Okay, this flange. We're we're selecting this flange, and we're analyzing one of uh, these two flanges. Okay, so that is this one here. Okay. So let's take this flange out and draw it here. Okay, this is a flange, and uh, its length here is 16 inch. And then here, as shown in this figure, you have point A and point B. And it is subjected to a bending moment. And a smaller value on the left and a larger number at the right. OK. So now let's uh, analyze the bending stress, calculate the bending bending stress in this beam. beam um, beam section. So let's look at the left hand side first. On the left. On the left we can calculate the bending stress at point A and point B. Okay. So the bending stress on the left hand side at point A equals what is the equation? What is the equation to calculate the bending stress? Right, m y over i. Right, so we have m left y a over i. So this is the equation to calculate um, the bending stress here on the left hand side at point A. Okay. So now this equation. Uh, we just uh, subject numbers into it. So we have the bending moment that is uh, 3,300 pound feet, and we need to uh, turn it to pound inch. So we multiply by 12. And by YA, what is YA? Okay, so YA is just equals Y bar, right? This is from the top to the uh, local centroid. Okay, it's not the neutral axis is it's not here. This is not the neutral axis. Okay. This is not the neutral axis. The neutral axis is here, uh, through is here, through the. Uh, the, the global centroid. Okay, so the YA equals Y bar, that is 4.43. Okay, over I, I is th th 346.5. Okay, now we have a value that is 507 P 
PSI. Okay. Then we can also calculate the bending stress here on the left hand side at point B. Okay, so this is uh, the sigma left at point B. So similar to there, so we have ML YB over I. Okay. Here the bending moment is the same, 3300 by 12 by the YB, right, is over the same I, 346.5. Okay, so the difference is YB. So what is the YB? The YB here is the distance from point B, from point B, I look at here, from B, to the local centroid here, uh, to the global centroid. So it's just uh, uh, equals the 4.43 minus uh, 3.5, right? So here we got uh, the result that is um, 106. PSI. So here in the same way we can calculate the bending stresses on the right hand side. Okay. On the right hand side. We can also calculate the uh, bending stress at point A and point B. Okay. Here we're talking about this point and this point. Okay. This is the A and this is the B. Uh, ignore this A B. Okay, um, so here is uh, the sigma right A will be M right YA over I. Right, the uh, M, M, R, M right will be 4700 by 12 by 4.43 over 346.5, so you will get 722 PSI. So similarly, on the right hand side at point B can be calculated by MR YB over I. So here you get a, so the YB will be the same as uh, above. You will have 4.43 minus 3.5 over I. So here you get a result that is uh, 100, 151 PSI. So now we can summarize uh, the stress uh, at these different points. Okay, at the left hand side, you have a stress, uh, normal stress at point A, that is 507. At point B, you get a 106. Okay, we, we assume a linear distribution, so you can use a straight line to, com to connect these two points. So is this stress in tension or compression, positive or negative. Well, since this is in the tension zone, okay, you, your, your beam is subject, subjected to a negative bending moment. So on the top, above the neutral axis, it will be subjected to tension. So all of these stresses will be positive. Okay, you have a positive uh, normal stress. Then on the right hand side, at point A you have 722, at point B you have 151. Again, we can use straight line to connect them, and you get positive uh, stress. Then here, let me ask you, what is the average values, average bending stress 
on the left hand side of the flange and at the right hand side of the of the of the flange. Okay. Since we assumed linear distribution, so the average the average stress here can be calculated as 507 plus 106 over 2. And the average value on the right hand side will be 722 plus 151 over 2. Right? So those are the two average stress levels subjected to uh, this, uh, this flange is subjected to. Okay? Keep this in mind, we can do further analysis. Okay, here let's uh, summarize uh, what we just calculated. And uh, so if you cut this flange out, if you cut this flange out, you get this. Okay. Then you have the dimensions as shown uh, in the previous slides. Uh, here you have 1.5 and here is 3.5. Okay, this flange will be subjected to a force a force FL at the left hand side and a force on the right hand side, let's see FR. So we can calculate based on the previously determined average uh, stress. And uh, if we can calculate the area, so we can calculate the equivalent force uh, on the left hand side and uh, right hand side of this beam section. Right? So here, uh, the equivalent force is on the each end. So we can calculate them here. So the equivalent forces at uh, uh, left and uh, right ends. Okay, the F L equals average stress at the left end by A. Right. So on the left end, as we just uh, shown here, is 507 plus 106 over 2. Right. Uh, 507 plus 106 over 2. By area, the area as shown here is 1.5 by 3.5. Okay. So we got 1,607 pound. And on the right hand side, the FR can be calculated as sigma right average by A. And as we just analyzed here, is 722 plus 151. 722 plus 151 over 2 by 1.5 by 3.5 and the result will be uh, 2290 pound. Okay, here we just got uh, these forces at the two ends. So what is the resultant combined force? The, the, the delta F Delta F subject uh, applied to this flange because of this bending. Obviously, that will be FR minus FL two two ninety minus one six oh seven. We get uh, six hundred eighty three pounds. Okay, so this is the the force, the resultant force on this uh, uh, 
on this flange. But this flange has to be in equilibrium, right? It has to be in equilibrium in this bended beam. So you have to find out another force to balance it. So where is the force to balance it? Can you find another force to balance this delta F so that um, this flange will be in equilibrium? Well, you have no other forces apart from shear force. So where is the shear force? It's here, okay? The shear force is here. On this interface, on the interface between the flange and the central rib, okay, you have an interface here, and the shear force on this uh, on this interface will be balancing the delta F, okay. So based on this, we can calculate the shear stress, where the shear stress tau equals V over a interface and the V to balance the delta F must equal delta F right? delta F over A interface. What is the interface area? Okay, you have three point five and the length is sixteen. Okay? Length is sixteen and uh, the depth here is 3.5. So the A interface equals 16 by 3.5. Okay, here the, uh, the delta F equals 683 over 16 by 3.5. You get 12.2 PSI. Okay, so now we have calculated the shear stress, right? The shear stress at this interface, it's such an interface uh, between this flange and the central rib. Okay, now let me ask you two questions. So we have, we can have some more discussion. Okay, so how about if, so in this example, we assumed that this cross section is composed of uh, three parts, right? So one central rib and the two flanges, and two different materials attached together. The flanges are perhaps glued on this central rib so that you have a interface. So how about, I'll have more discussion. Question one, so how about a uniform material? Uh, cross section. So that is to say, how about if we just have such a cross section? Okay, only the same material, not this one piece material. Do you think if you, if you have the same dimension and the same bending moments, do you think you have the same amount of uh, Shear stress at this at at uh, this plane. If you use the plane to cut it, do you think you have the same uh, shear stress at here? Well, the answer is yes. Okay, no matter you have this bonded, glued different pieces of material or a uniform one piece of material at this location, you will just have this amount of bending stress. Uh, this amount of uh, shear stress. Okay, we just uh, assumed this combined situation to derive this result, but just keep in mind, even though you have the same uh, uniform one piece material, you will have the same amount of uh, uh, shear stress. Okay, the second, uh, the second question. How about A uh, random fictitious 
interface. So what is the shear stress at a random fictitious interface? So here in this example, we analyzed, okay, look at here. In this example, we uh, focused on here, this interface, right? And uh, we used this area, this area to and uh, to calculate the, the 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 forces, the resultant forces F L and F R, right? So how about if we have a random random face here, one a uh, random plane here, fictitious interface to cut it from here? Do you think the shear stress at this random fictitious interface is larger than the tau we just calculated or smaller than the tau we calculated. Right? The answer should be smaller, right? Smaller. Since if you cut it from here, the area the area you can use to calculate the F FL and FR will be smaller, right? will be smaller. So the resultant force will be smaller and uh, the equivalent of V will be smaller. So the tau will be smaller, okay? So what do you think is the shear stress here at the surface? Zero, right? It's zero. So because if you cut it here, the area here you can use to calculate the F L prime prime F R prime prime will be zero. Okay. Okay. Those will be very useful uh, conclusions we'll use for further analysis later. Okay. Then still based on this situation, let's do a summary. Okay, summarize, let's summarize uh, the whole process we just used to uh, derive the bending stress. How did we derive F, uh, delta F? Right, so this is the core. Right? If you derive the delta F, uh, you will know that V equals delta F, and you can calculate the tau. Right? So combine the equations we just used, uh, the delta F can be calculated as the uh, sigma R minus sigma L, the, the average values, right, by the A, right? Then the, this will be sigma R This will be the MR YA over I plus MR YB over I over two. Right. This is the uh, sigma R. Then minus M left YA over I plus m left yb over i over 2 right, by a. Right, so this is the extension of this uh, equation. Then reorganize it, uh, you will get uh, mr minus f m left over i by Ya plus Yb over 2 by A. Okay. So are you familiar with this? So let's uh, talk about this. So please thinking about what does this term mean? What does this term mean? Ya plus Yb over 2. So what is this? It is actually, if you look at here, this is uh, this is A, this is B, 
right? The YA plus YB over 2 is actually the YA is from here, uh, from the centroid to here. This is YA over from centroid to oh. from centroid to to B here. This is YB. YA plus YB over two is actually from the local centroid from the local centroid to the overall centroid. So this YA plus YB over two is actually our D, okay? The D, it equals Y bar minus YI, okay? This is the same thing, okay? This is uh, the D, the distance from the local centroid to the local centroid. <laughs> Okay, so this equation can be rewritten as since MR minus ML is denoted as delta M over I by D by A. So here we will get the equation that is uh, delta F equals delta M by Q over i, okay. Here, the q equals a d. Uh, we call this the first moment of area. Okay, this will be a important parameter in this chapter. We will use it frequently. So now you can see that if we know if we know this equation, if we know this equation, oh, the calculations will be simple. The calculations of the um, of the shear stress will be much simpler. Okay, so if we know this equation, we use this equation to do everything uh, we just derived previously in the case one. The delta F equals delta M by Q over I. Right, the delta M is. 4,700 minus 3,300 by Q, right, over I the 346.5. So what is the Q? The Q can be calculated here, right, Q equals A by D, right, the A, in our case, A is uh, 1.5 by 3.5, right, that is here. Right, this is the area. Then the D, the D is just as we just said here, right? The D is Y bar minus Y I, right? So Y bar is 4.43 here, and uh, minus uh, 3.5 over 2. Then you can calculate it, you will get uh, 14.09 cubic inch. And this is a 14.09, okay? Then so you will get uh, 683 pounds, okay? See that we get the same result, but we ignored all of this analysis, right? We just, uh, do a simple calculation. Then the tau can be calculated simply by uh, delta F over A interface. Right, that is 683 over the interface uh, as we just calculated here. It's a 16 by 3.5. Right, so this is 12.2 PSI. Okay. So this is just one case. Uh, one case we just analyzed. We, we consider this uh, composite area is composed of uh, central rib and uh, two side flanges. 
And later we will have other cases. We have a case two, and we will calculate uh, the interface between a cap and a rib. Okay, this is case two. So we will we will talk about case two later. <coughs>